Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2 and today we're going to have a look at some of the other things that have been going on around the base that aren't related to Arcalink storage and other sort of plot related type of stuff. And I'm going to start off by continuing with by talking about Naquium because I had a bit of a problem with the uh, the Naquium supply in the in the last stream, and that was due to it was running out in completely running out of um, of methane ice. It comes flowing in. It comes in theory comes flowing in along here, gets melted down into methane gas, goes into the pipes, and, as you, and then, then that goes off to be used as part of the uh, the smelting process over here in all of the, all of these machines. And so, well, we've only just run out. And okay, look, some more has just arrived now because we've had a train come down from uh, from orbit, and that's dumped well some out into this warehouse over here but as you can see that's being passed out as quickly as it's coming in it's being dumped out onto these belts and then it's just disappearing straight into this machine which is making this lovely stuttering sound and well it's trying desperately to fill this pipe up here but nope it's all gone so you can see how this is being a bit of a problem at the moment we are absolutely ripping through the methane ice down here to try and make enough methane to keep these systems going over here well we've got a lump of it heading down the belt over here which will eventually get over to here and go down into the machines over here and we'll make a little bit more from them as well but yeah things are not going well there are a number of different sources for the methane ice so as you can see over here we've got quite a bit of it that's being brought over in the in the ships from stardust because i've got a mine over there and i thought well we might as well bring that over and I've bumped the numbers up a bit, so we're bringing over quite a lot more in each spaceship now, because we're requesting much, much more. I don't know how we hadn't had serious problems beforehand, um, but for some reason it seemed to be okay, and now and now very much isn't. So I've increased all the numbers, but one of our supplies is, as I say, coming over in the spaceship, that's getting passed out into the warehouses here, and then when the train comes up to pick up the crushed naquitite, we get eight wagons of crushed naquitite and one wagon of, uh, of methane ice. And so from that, we're going to get, well, there's about a thousand in there, there's another couple of thousand in there, and about and, and a few hundred in there. So maybe we've got, a, we've got a couple of thousand of it up here in space, it's going to get taken down, and yeah, that'll get swallowed up extremely quickly. It's better than nothing, but it's, uh, it, it is currently not enough, so maybe I'll have to increase the numbers even further over here, make sure we start bringing over even more. Because we do have quite a good supply of it over here on Stardust. Well, I say we have quite a good supply. There is 128,000 left in this patch. We don't have a good supply over here on Stardust. I might need to start thinking of other ways to get this. Now, fortunately, there is another place that produces methane. And that's over on Big Red as part of the stage of take, turning the Vitamelange Bloom into mostly Vitamelange Spice and a little bit of extract. You also blow out a little bit of methane gas. As you can see here, we are producing, well, we produce 40, 40 spice. 0.1 of an extract and 5 methane gas. Now that's not a huge amount of methane gas each time it runs, but there's a lot of machines doing this recipe, as then so between them all they are producing quite a lot of methane gas. And all that is getting blown along a pipe over to well, putting a tank here where well, we have an emergency blow off valve over here. I hope we never we never actually use that. But then it can be passed up here where we can mix it with uh, with cryonite slush and turn it into methane ice. And this stuff can be taken over to um, over, over to Talos and then thawed out again over there. Now you'll notice that here we're getting a little burst of it coming along this uh, this belt over here every so often and that would last a tiny tiny fraction of a second over on Talos so I don't think this is going to be enough I think we're going to need a much much bigger supply of methane ice than this however because this has been running for ages and we've not been producing Naquium for all that long we have another 32,000 sitting in a station over here. And this is down on Norvis in the, in the, in the, in the junk that gets brought over area. So when, when a ship arrives from Big Red, it'll unload all the stuff that isn't, isn't Vitamelange as, as the, as the byproducts. That'll get eventually brought over to here through sort of the train system that you've seen before. So I won't run through it all again. And then from there, that can run over. We've got a filter over here, brings the methane ice out over and, and puts it into here. From here, I believe it then gets taken down. There'll be a station down here somewhere or perhaps over in the main station area for the, for the bus up here. I'm not sure exactly where it comes into but somewhere around here there, there should be a station full of methane ice that will then all get brought down here and can then be put into into the trains to be taken up into orbit there we go here's the here's a methane ice train over here so it comes along this belt from wherever that comes from so we have a train here that's trying to fill up but currently is, is isn't quite there yet we are transporting it away from here basically as fast as it's being made and so yes we are going to need to try and come up with another supply of methane ice somewhere and i think the best place to get that from is probably going to be Kalidas asteroid belt one we have a, a, a quite a quantity of methane ice here 307 230 245 that seems like a reasonable amount what about asteroid belt 2 oh uh, that has more of it actually yeah oh, there's a lot more of it out there let's have a let's have a quick look at this surface and decide because i think we might need to set up a mining system on this um in in this uh, asteroid field that will then just go out and, and dig up enormous quantities of the methane ice now looking around here i don't see any asteroids at all that's a little bit concerning but i can set this scanning with the navigation satellite and have a good look around and see what i can find 
And there we go, things are starting to look a little bit healthier now. We're finding a bit of stuff. And if I look over here, well, there's 88 million methane ice there. There's another 177 million there. 164 million there. So I think the next, maybe next time, I shall come out here, I'll drop in a big mining uh, facility on this patch, on this patch here, with some speed modules and stuff as well, because these are really, really dense patches, and just dump that straight into a spaceship that can take it over to Talos and unload there. Now, this might end up having to be a, a three-stop three, a three -stop journey, because we're going to need to refuel the spaceship from time to time, and the easiest place to do that is going to be over in Norbit. But we can have a ship that will fly from here to, to Talos to unload, and then maybe from there over to Norbit to refuel, and then back out again. And if we have a full ship of methane ice turning up, then I am cautiously optimistic that that will keep things going. As it is, the amount coming from Stardust and the amount coming from Norvis is insufficient. We'll need to bump that up a lot. However, I think being able to bring it over from Kalidus Asteroid Belt 2 is going to solve all of our problems. So that means yet another outpost, even more uh, even more solar required and therefore even more scaffolding. But we're sort of cracking the problem of scaffolding a little bit, maybe, kind of? Um, yeah. Also, this is actually, but also, this is a very, very long way out. If we look at this, you'll see we're only getting 20% solar, so maybe that's going to be another candidate for a beam emitter to, uh, to bring the power over here. Uh, that said, at least it's not on a planet. Snowdrop, for example, only, oh, actually, Snowdrop gets 22%, and we've not used, and we've used a beam receiver there, so, yeah, we will, we will have to see what we feel like the best way of doing this is. Um, Perhaps the answer is going to be to power it from the spaceship. I, I, I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll have to see how that goes. But this is going to be a little, this is going to be a little bit tricky. The other alternative is to go to Kalidas Asteroid Belt One and mine it from here, where we have five and a half million methane ice over here, and I can't see any other patches at all. So that's a. Yeah, it's not going to be as good, but it is certainly possible. We'll, 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 we shall see how we feel, I think, about that one. In the meantime, increasing the amount of, uh, of, of uh, methane ice requested over here has sorted the problem out in the short term. However, I'm a little bit concerned that it's going to lead to the Talos N ship just straight up not leaving because it can't get enough methane ice through because we, we don't have enough over here anymore. We've ripped through all of the supplies that have been brought from Big Red. So, yeah, some, some thought and some tweaking and some general... I don't know whatting is going to be required around this around this area because it it ain't working very nicely as it is. Uh, we'll have we'll have to do something about it. Expanding the systems down on Talos and putting in some new machines up here has, of course, increased the amount of power we're using on this planet, and it'll go up even further once these machines get all of their modules and you know actually start running. So instead of taking what the presumably 16 kilowatts they're taking at the moment, they start taking the three and a half megawatts each. That's going to bump that up quite a bit. And so, as is traditional, I tried to put some more solar in in orbit, and that was tricky because of all the problems I was mentioning yesterday, but I did manage to steal a few bits and pieces from here and there, and so I've got a little bit more set up down here. And I also upgraded quite a lot of the red solar panels that were around here to, to the uh, black Naquium ones, because they produced twice as much power, and it was really, it was very much the, uh, the scaffolding we're short of, because nobody who's going out and building a, um, a, a, an anchor is using the Naquium solar panels because they're too expensive, they're just being patient. And so, there were a number of the Naquium ones that I was able to nick, and we now don't have any left, <clears throat> but there, there were at least some that I could nick at the time, and I was able to come out and, and drop them in over here, so we, we've now got just about enough power. At the moment, we've got huge amounts more power than we need, because all of the Naquium stuff has failed due to the lack of methane gas, but at one point, we were trying to use about 10 gigawatts, and we were able to produce about 9, and so obviously that was not working, and so I was so that was which is why I needed to come over here and expand it. I guess we shall see what happens when everything kicks in properly with all the new machinery, whether it's still okay, or whether I'm going to need to actually finish this little corner down here off and fill that up with solar panels as well. Hmm. Down here with these pulverizers, well I talked a little bit yesterday about how we're using different modules in them to, to what we'd normally use. Ideally, I'd like to put the fill these up with tier 6 modules, and that's what we're actually requesting at the moment. Uh, however, I don't think we're going to be able to get those, because over here in Norbit, we... Basically, we aren't able to make the tier 6 modules, because oh, actually, right now, we could. We've got... We've got for the first time in I don't know how long, we've got enough of everything. So we've got we've got the uh, the vitalic reagent coming in here, so we can well we can start we can start making the tier four modules. And so the problem with these is it requires 120 vitamin and extract to make each module. So that belt is just flowing constantly trying to fill it up. And then whenever, whenever we manage to make two of those, then we can gobble up 50 bio scrubbers in an attempt to make a tier five module. And then once we manage to make two of those, we can swallow up 140 vitalic reagents to make the sixes. And so actually, right now, we do seem to have some reagent available. I don't know how 
how long this is going to last because I'm not used to this actually working. <laughs> but for a long, long time, we were we were bringing over quite a lot of uh, re quite a lot of everything in the big grid ship, and so that was being loaded into the train. We we're taking away whatever was needed for what to, to wherever it was needed. Uh, but then most of the Vitalic reagent was then getting stolen by the Naquium processing because that was absolutely ripping through it. And due to the way this is set up, that's kind of a priority. That's the, so he's, he's, he's being filled up sooner than the train would be. So that would get most of it, and then a little bit more dribble over into the train, and that would be, again because of the way the priorities are set up, that would be brought over into the science area over here. But now finally it seems like we've got enough over here that we're not demanding it anymore, probably because we're not actually doing bioscience at the moment, and so anything, any bio that is getting used up is just going to be for, for things like the self-sealing gel and the, the AI cores down here, uh, which, which do use a bit of the reagent granted, but it's not, too, it's not too bad compared to the supply. Also Mark has been drastically increasing the supply as well, and so that means that we've now been able to get a little bit of the reagent over here, and so now the problem is with the extract, uh, this, this stuff, because that's taking in 120 of that for every single one of the tier 4s, therefore it's 240 for each one of the tier 5s, and 480 for each one of the tier 6s, so that's that's a bit crazy, and you can, so that you can understand why that's being ripped through quite so quickly, but this does mean that we have have, we potentially now have a supply of the reagent available and with the, and with the extract being so much cheaper and easier to make maybe things are going to be all right at least until the Naquian production kicks back in again we uh, we shall have to wait and see and that brings us neatly on to the subject of resources and how much stuff, how much of everything that we're trying to make or how much of everything we need have we got and you can see that over here the reagent we don't have a lot of that. We do. We do still need to bring a lot more of that over. But the other, the other two Vita product, the other three Vita products that we've got over here seem to be absolutely fine. Iridium is absolutely fine. Uh, Mike says that he's had a quick look at Kothar, and everything on there seems to be hunky dory. And. I, I would say this graph backs him up on that one. Cryonite and Vulcanite, they're both pretty good. We've uh, those those are, as far as we're concerned, pretty much solved systems. And it looks like a Vulcanite spaceship has just arrived because I saw that bar filling up from uh, 70 to 80 percent, maybe or, or 80 to 90 percent. Maybe we'll now get it up to 100 percent as we as we watch it. However, the beryllium and the holmium both seem to be very very low. And that's a bit of a surprise, because I thought the beryllium was now more or less okay. But if we look over here, we can see that there is indeed no spaceship here, there is nothing in the warehouses, and there is a train over here that hasn't been able to fill up, so that's a little bit upsetting. Looking over in Tal Orbit, we can see that there is a ship here that is, it's two-thirds full. And at this point, if we've run out over in Norbit, I would hope the ship would at least be on its way over, but it isn't, so... That it looks like we're not producing beryllium fast enough. Now, at the moment, we are producing it at more than half a red belt. We have a solid, well... I was going to say we have a solid red belt, half red belt coming through and then it suddenly proved me a liar, uh, which is very rude of it. Uh, we have a, a, a flow of it coming through. The trains are coming in and unloading. The trains are queued up along here. The, the, the core chunks aren't coming in quite as quickly as I would like, but it's... The, the, because we get bringing the uh, the ore from here into these machines over here, this system is running constantly. All the rest of them, I mean, with the with the rate the trains are coming in, this this box is getting down to maybe only a sort of that well, the high 490s before the before the next train comes along to fill it up again. So I don't see how we could be having any problems with the supply here. So maybe we still don't have enough processing. That's a bit of a scary thought. I was hoping we'd be well in, we'd be we'd be having this flowing through really really nicely now, but apparently not. We, we just don't seem to have quite enough coming through for the demand at the other end. Now looking looking over here, we've got this train in, again two thirds full, um, so that's going okay. But we need it to be bringing up bringing up the beryllium up here, dumping it into the into the spaceship so it can be taken away and. There's not enough of it. We need. I yeah, might need to increase that even further. Now I do wonder: is it that we're not making it quickly enough, or is it that we have a, a that we're filling up buffers? And looking at this system, we can see that we're producing it at 1.1 thousand per minute. We're using it at 1.2 thousand a minute over the last hour. So that suggests to me that we are, are actually still using it up faster than we're producing it, which is kind of shocking given the uh, the, the amount we're producing and the and how and the fact that I thought it was all absolutely fine. So that's going to be something else I'm going to need to take a look at over the last 10 hours. Well. Again, we can see we're still using it up faster than we're producing it. And this does not look promising. I think we definitely have a we definitely have a shortage of beryllium. We're going to need to be producing it a bit faster than we are at the moment. Hmm. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's going to be yet another thing to look into. At this point, looking into it is probably going to mean coming over here, making sure all of these machines have got all the modules they need in them. What's 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 the problem over here? So, okay, so we don't seem to have any kind of shortage of throughput. All of the the this pipe here is not completely full, and therefore these machines are running fast enough, even though they're unhappy about their modules. We're trying to put some better productivity modules in here. We want to put some better. Oh, we do want to put better speed modules into this beacon. Maybe that would help. 
and then we could get all of these belts flowing a little bit more quickly and solidly and maybe these machines would run faster. So some upgrading over here can, could be done and that's exactly the same over here. But that comes back to what I was saying earlier about needing more high-end productivity modules and that relies on the um, on, on the vitamin and so on and so on all the way back up the tree. So yeah, th this is all, all a bit problematic. And also looking at these belts, they do actually seem to, with the exception of this one, I don't know why this one's a bit slower, the other, the other belts seem to be flowing nearly constantly, which suggests, especially these two at the bottom, which suggests the system is running at about the right speed. I don't know. I shall take a look, good look at it in the next stream. But for now, I can tell, okay, yeah, these are all tier three modules over here, and they're all tier six modules over here, plus a, a efficiency one. So, okay, yes, that seems to be the that seems to be the, the problem. This this beacon here does not have fast enough modules in it. If we upgrade that, then at least we'll be able to get a bit more throughput in this area. And if we can then get some more a better productivity modules in here, then we'll get more output for the input as well, and so everything will then be significantly better. I should probably also flip all of these inserters to put onto the near side of the belt just to balance this one up a little better. Although that said, as it comes down through here, it doesn't seem to matter. We're not having any sort any sort of problems with putting everything onto the belt so it's kind of okay I, I think as it comes through so yeah it looks like we need more beryllium more over on Njord, Tristan has been continuing to uh, plug some of the gaps in the holmium supply and the biggest one was apparently an insufficiency of hydrogen chloride so he's expanded the production of that now I don't think this area has been expanded I think it might be over here that it's been expanded it's kind of hard to tell uh, and now the limiting factor is the stone input as you can tell by the fact there's no none coming along here and being produced but he assures us that when there is enough stone there is enough hydrogen chloride so it's currently waiting for the uh, for the stone supplies to be to catch up with uh, with demand to be brought over in large enough quantities and to that end and, well, he sp sped up the speed that the trains are being unloaded down here on the ground, and also the speed they're being loaded up in space. So he's put in, yeah, ah, here we go. I see how he's done this. So instead, yeah, he's put in a warehouse here to buffer all the stone that comes out of the spaceship down here, and then it can be passed over more quickly by the uh, by the by the inserters here, rather than waiting for these two two quite slow belts. So he's got four insert four superior inserters, and he's used the long one so you can stack them like this. So you can have two of them feeding into the train from the same warehouse, uh, and that's going so that's going to load up the train significantly more quickly than it was before with a pair of belts and, and the two loaders. So that means the train should fill up a, a lot more quickly with the stone and therefore be able to bring it down to down to the planet a lot more quickly and therefore we'll be able to make the hydrogen chloride a lot more quickly and therefore, therefore, in theory, we should be able to get a lot more holmium flowing out. However, at the moment, the spaceship is sat up here waiting to fill up and then once it, gets, once it fills up, it'll then leave. And it's only about half full at the moment. So I think this is going to be one that's going to be worth dispatching manually, I think, telling the spaceship to clear off, go off and, uh, and, and unload in, in, uh, in, in orbit and refill presumably with an enormous quantity of stone to bring all of that back over here because as we were discussing in previous uh, videos there isn't any more stone on a Njord so the only stone we have now the only stone that's going to be available is anything that's brought over from Norbit and from well from Norvis and then probably indirectly from Andrew Yes, Andragon. So we, Andragon is our stone planet, so we dig up the stone there, we bring it over in a spaceship to Norbit, we then probably take it down to the ground on on uh, on, Nor uh, on Nor down to Norvis, add in any stone that's been produced on Norvis from the uh, from core processing, take that back up into space, back up to Norbit again, then load it into this spaceship to bring it over to here, where it'll then go back down again. There's a lot of multiple handling in there, but running trains up and down space elevators is so cheap once you've got the elevator there that it kind of doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, Tristan will be bringing the stone out by spaceship, and once that is sorted, and once there's enough of it out here, and it's being brought out fast enough, then everything should be fine, and that should fix the the, uh, the hot shortage of holmium that we've been seeing, and then hopefully everything will be okay from that point onwards, at least with the holmium. Um, we shall see how that goes. Yeah, as we can see, looking at the graph here, well, the... Um, the, the beryllium is being made steadily and constantly, and it's still not enough, as we saw but when we checked the numbers, 1.1 to versus 1.2 uh, there. The iron is all over the place, so that, that's, that's actually a really good sign. The reason the iron is spiking up and down like this is because we're capable of making it much, much faster than we're using it. So every so often we'll make a load, and then the system will calm down and go to sleep for a while because we've got enough and we don't need any more. Then a train will come along, it'll grab a load of it, and then we'll make some more iron to replace that. So here you can see that we're producing a thousand a minute, and we're using, well, it's less, it is actually less than a thousand a minute. I was expecting those two numbers to be closer, to be honest. Um, but because we, we, but we know that we have loads and loads of iron, so it's spiking up. So the spikes up and down like that is absolutely fine. 
The Iridium, well, we've had various problems with that in the past, which is probably why it was dead all the way along here. Um, but now that has been, it seems to be okay. It's, and I believe it has caught up, as we've seen from the graphs, actually. We've got enough in Norbit that we've now made, the system has backed up all the way back through. And so that now we've had the, the production has slowed down and then sort of sped up a little bit again. This will be because the spaceship got back to Kothar and then claimed a load of it. So we had to make a load and then it paused and, and then maybe another space and then it left and another spaceship has arrived so we're ramping the production back up again but this is all this is this is good this is this is what we like this is what we see when things are working really really well the steel is similar well we seem to have made a load of steel and then it's paused for a little while and then spiked back up again so steel steel i think is probably okay but we're seeing this sort of this this dip here uh, sorry we're seeing it running constantly most of the time because we we're producing enough steel but only just the Holmium, well Holmium we're seeing this wiggly line and that's not so promising. That means we're having problems with the production and it's, it's struggling a bit. And as you've seen by the, from the graph, yeah, it, it's not great. We're, we're making uh, 580 a minute. We're trying to use 712, well we are using 712 a minute. We would be using a bit more than that if it was available. So the Holmium is struggling, but in a different way to the Beryllium. So that's why you're seeing this uppy downy thing along here because that's struggling for input uh, on its inputs. So it, it works for a little while and then it runs out of hydrogen chloride or stone or whatever. And so, it, and so it goes down a bit and then it spikes back up again it's got more supply. The beryllium is running more or less constantly. I'm not quite sure what happened here. Let's, that's probably when we had the power problems. Uh, but it's running more or less constantly. It's just not fast enough. So that's a different sort of, um, a different sort of problem. And then here, the steel is running constantly. But then there's a dip here because we finally got to enough. And so you can see, you can sort of tell from the various different shapes what's going on. Uh, granted, I can't really tell quite so well because with the iron because that's so much over what it actually needs to be. Uh, copper isn't shown on here. Copper is all over the place as well, but that seems to be... I, f I feel like because of the big sweeps we're getting from it, it's the same sort of shapes as the iron. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go along. Can you tell? <laughs> whatever whatever it is, though, we you can, you can definitely tell the difference between the Holmium and the, uh, and the Beryllium by the shapes of their wiggly lines, um, to, because they have different reasons why they're struggling. The Beryllium has plenty of input, uh, but there just isn't enough processing. The Holmium has plenty of processing, but there isn't enough input. And I think we'll call this episode here. There's been quite a lot to talk about this week, but it's a slightly funny amount that isn't quite three full episodes, but I thought it was better to have uh, two slightly shorter ones and one massive mammoth episode. So thank you very much for watching. We shall be back again tomorrow with the, uh, the final part of this video, and then back on Monday the day after with the next stream where we're going to be carrying on trying to sort out some of these problems we've seen. After that, I shall also be back on Wednesday for some more Satisfactory where things are going pretty well at the moment, I think, so I hope you'll come along and join me for that. And of course, there'll be the catch-up videos at the weekend as normal. So, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.